Namat Ratana Tayasa, may I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening everyone. So today is Monday the 8th of February 2021 and this is uh, Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. So today is Monday and I hope you that you are all having a wonderful time. Here at the center we have uh, plenty of snow and um, we cannot get out. <clears throat> and uh, snow is just uh, piling up more and more and tomorrow it says that will be minus seven so uh, stay warm take care and uh, get some uh, nice drinks meanwhile we are very fortunate that uh, here in uh, living in West Hill you know, n nice neighbors came and clear the road so hopefully we can drive but still plenty of snow coming down as well um, so good evening Yvonne uh, good evening Anish and good evening everyone so it's a proper winter and uh, someone said that uh, it's a horrible to have such a uh, lots of uh, snow uh, and they say that uh, this is a global warming and I said and that it is not a global warming it is simply nature is returning back to normal uh, uh, since uh, probably because of the all um, um, one year of uh, less uh, cars on the road and the factories are stopped working for some times so as a result probably the nature is returning to its normal and I was even told that uh, about 20-30 years ago uh, here in Scotland around in Aberdeen normally have uh, similar to today so it's uh, kind of uh, coming back to the uh, 20 or 30 years yes it is a Scotland eh? And Scotland is always unpredictable uh, because of the wind, the rain, the snow, and the sunshine. It's always changing at all the time. Right? So today, again, uh, let's back to our uh, regular discussions. And this is going to be uh, today's topic is um, again still on the Satipatthana Samyutta. And today we are reading the Nalanda the discourse called the Nalanda and this discourse is about the discussions between Venerable Sariputta and the Buddha <clears throat> so Venerable Sariputta and the Buddha the story goes like this on one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling at Nalanda in Pavarika's mango grove so here the Pavarika is a mango grove and this is belongs to the millionaire called power yeah? and um, this power initially didn't have a faith in the Buddha but later on after uh, listening to the Dhamma the teachings uh, from the Buddha he got he gained the faith and he offered his mango grove to the monks and become the place where uh, the dwellings then the Venerable Sariputta approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said to him. And this is again a normal uh, etiquette that whenever uh, people, uh, the people or the monks visits the Buddha, normally will pay homage to him and then will sat down in an appropriate place. And which has been the case whoever comes to the temple they normally pay them homage to the Buddha and then pay respect to the monks and sit down in a, a proper place uh, before any conversation. And here Venerable Sariputta said, Venerable Sir, I have such confidence in the Blessed One that I, ha I believe 
there has not been nor even will be nor exist at present another ascetic or brahmin more knowledgeable than the blessed one with respect to enlightenment yeah. so here the venerable uh, sariputta said in that way <coughs> saying basically that he had a confidence in the buddha and he believes that there is no one who is more knowledgeable than the buddha now in this case what would you say suppose if someone comes to you and say that oh you are so beautiful oh you are so knowledgeable there is no one who compared to you what would be your response would it be like oh thank you i am so, no, thank you very much yeah, like that or you will say oh no don't be daft or like that <laughs> Mm -hmm. There is a, <coughs> a story that uh, uh, there was one one lady uh, and I see see relatively beautiful but always you know she thinks that she is not and then uh, whenever someone tells her that you are beautiful and she says uh, you are lying you know like that <laughs> so here the Sariputta is saying to the Buddha that he is a knowledgeable one. Now, what do you think the Buddha will reply? Buddha would would the Buddha will be happy to hear that his disciple is saying that he is such a knowledgeable one, or uh, he would simply reject the idea? So, <clears throat> so Venerable Sariputta said, "I have such confidence in the Blessed One." that I believe there has not been, nor even will be, nor exist at present another ascetic or Brahmin more knowledgeable than the Blessed One. So basically, Buddha, uh, the Sariputta, as being a first-hand, uh, uh, first-hand, uh, sorry, right-hand side of the, the Buddha, yeah, uh, saying to the Buddha that he is the knowledgeable one and there is no equal to, it, to him. In that case, Buddha simply said, Lofty indeed uh, is the uh, blowing utterance of yours, Sariputta. You have roared a definitive categorical lion's roar. Uh, and this is called a lion's roar of the Sariputta. <coughs> so basically, Buddha is saying that this is a high praise. Uh, and you you are praising me so highly, uh, Sariputta. And then uh, further on, he said, Venerable Sir, I have such confidence in this. And then uh, saying that the Buddha is the only who has got the greater knowledge. And then the Buddha further on saying, Have you now, Sariputta, encompassed with your mind the minds of all the Arahats, the perfected enlightened ones, <clears throat> Arisen in the past and known thus, those blessed ones were of such virtue, of such qualities, of such wisdom, of such dwellings, of such liberation. So he, the Buddha is returning back and asking to the Sariputta that have he, you know, have he, has he ever, you know, encompassed. So, able to uh, comprehend about the minds of all the noble ones and uh, <clears throat> and uh, the blessed ones the, the buddhas and uh, arisen in the past knowing that have they are uh, in a good virtue good quality wisdom and dwelling and liberated and in that case the sariputta said that uh, and sariputta said no venerable sir and it is unlikely that uh, uh, apart from the Buddha or uh, other people or other uh, ascetics or the noble uh, disciples would be able to comprehend on some uh, some something like those who are uh, arahats, uh, because arahats are like a person who has fully liberated themselves. And previously, if you remember, on Saturday, I mentioned that a great man. And a great man is basically a person who has got the liberated mind. And only liberated mind 
is known as a person who is a great man, one who hasn't got any greed, hatred, and delusion, and won't be have any biasness in anything else. And uh, and uh, and that person is the liberated one, the noble ones, and noble ones are normally the the purest one. And the Buddha is simply asking back to the Sariputta, saying that have you ever uh, able to comprehend uh, about the minds of others from the past, yeah? minds of others from the past. And then Venerable Sariputta say, no, I haven't. And then further on, a Buddha goes on saying that then Sariputta, have you encompassed with your mind the minds of all Arhats, the perfected enlightened ones who will arise in the future and known this? Those blessed ones will be of such virtue, qualities, wisdom, dwellings and liberated. And asking further uh, that have you ever able to encompass the minds of arhats or the noble ones in the future okay? in the future and the, uh, uh, the, the venerable sariputta say no venerable sir and a third then sariputta have you encompassed with your mind my own mind i being at present the arhat being known thus, the blessed one of such virtue, qualities, wisdom, and dwelling, and liberation. So Buddha again him returned back and saying that, Do you know my mind? Yeah? Uh, do you know that how much am I qualified? Or am I having this virtue and uh, uh, such qualities and such wisdom and such dwellings or such liberation? It's like uh, people normally think that um, you know, uh, they would like to know others' mind. Uh, and uh, they also would like to know that what they are thinking of. And actually there is uh, a, a quality called abhinya or the supernormal power. And one of them is ability to read others' mind and know others' mind. And uh, uh, this quality one can develop by having a good meditation. If a person is practicing good meditation by using uh, one of the objects and fully contemplating on that, and mind becomes uh, absorbed and become a one-pointedness, and having this one-pointedness mind, um, uh, as he develops the absorptions of uh, and the jhanas, so-called, uh, in that moment, he or she ab has got ability to develop those qualities, so-called uh, supernormal powers, such as uh, ability to hear uh, the so-called divine uh, ears, divine eyes, uh, and ability to uh, read others' mind, ability to know the future, and such like that. Um, but unfortunately, those qualities or the the abilities uh, eventually fades away as uh, a person if they misuse it. And further on, and uh, having those will not help you either. And will not help you to overcome uh, from uh, the difficulties or troubles that you are having. Uh, I I think I have mentioned about such qualities like. You know, it brings suffering as well, and it brings sadness in yourself if you have those qualities. Like uh, you know, I, I have mentioned that uh, you know, in the past, there was occasions that I would, I uh, would, I was able to read, and then having known that others' minds and what they are going through brings only uh, a sadness and a sorrow in yourself, and feel not able to help them. Uh, and uh, this not good for your own well-being. So as a result of that, you know, uh, and I said that this is good for uh, good to explore, but not good to in uh, to practice, uh, which will not uh, brings uh, the happiness in our own self. And here, basically, you know, Buddha is saying that have you known 
the the Buddhas or the Arhats in the past and their minds and how they were and then have you known in the future that how it will be and then further on Buddha further said that uh, do you know my mind uh, and uh, how I my virtues are how my qualities are how my wisdoms are and how my dwellings are and with that the Buddha uh, the Sariputta again said, no, venerable sir. Yeah? So that's why sometimes you know, people may come and say, oh, I can read your mind. You know? If, suppose, you know, suppose if you have got the quality or ability to read others' mind, what would you do? Uh, what would you do if you can read others' mind? Would you, do you think that would you be happy? Do you think that would you be able to manipulate them? Or do you think that would you be able to help them? Yeah. So you can uh, type it, uh, your thoughts on it. Uh, suppose you have got these qualities of uh, re ability to read others' mind, others' thought, what they are thinking of, what they are uh, you know, uh, about to say uh, what's going on in their minds what would you do? Uh -huh. and that can be very scary that's why it's better not to have those qualities yeah. we can experience but not we shouldn't having that quality uh, the moment when we have that uh, can, very, can be very scary okay and further on, after Buddha asked about uh, himself, and the Bu um, Venerable Sariputta said, No, I don't know. Uh, but again, Sariputta, uh, and further on, uh, the Buddha said, Sariputta, when you do not have any knowledge encompassing the minds of Arhats, the perfect enlightened ones of the past, the future, and the present, um, why do you utter this lofty, uh, bellowing utterance and roar, this definite. Uh, a categorical lion's roar. Yeah. So, and after An uh, Sariputta said that he didn't know about uh, the minds of a past, present, and a future, and the Buddhas and uh, Arhats and all the noble ones, then the Buddha simply replied back, uh, saying, kind of reminding Venerable Sariputta that since you do not know about it, then how come you are you know, proclaiming like with a, in a, with a sense of a, in a lion's roar? And you may have known a lion's roar. Lion is uh, the king of uh, forests. And since being a king of a forest, he could, you know, the moment when he roars, all the animals will you know, run away. Uh, in that way, so it's known in, in a Buddhist scripture, known as whenever you are making a proclamation or saying something that you fully confidence in it and you are uttering it, then that is known as lion's roar. And so here Buddha is saying to the Sariputta that since you do not know the minds of uh, the Buddhas and noble beings in the past, present and the future, how come you are making this statement saying that I have such confidence in the blessed ones that I believe there has not been nor even will be nor exist at present another ascetic or Brahmin more knowledgeable than the blessed one with respect to the enlightened man. So that was the uh, Sariputta's response, uh, sorry, uh, the Buddha's responding to the Sariputta. But for us, if we are, if someone comes and uh, and a flattering about your success, flattering about your beauty, flattering about your uh, knowledge, what will we do? We will be over the moon. Uh, we will be lifted, uh, 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 elated, See, thinking that, oh, this person is so kind and he knows me. You know? And uh, uh, often time what happens is that the person who is praising you, often uh, the person who is you know, saying beautiful words about you, you know, despite of not right or correct. I hope it's right, but no, n most of the cases it's not the right. The intention and motivation can be very different. 
Sometimes they are saying to uh, saying nice words to you simply to gain some help out of you. Other times, some you know, simply to uh, make you feel down or make you feel like you, you know, to be part of your group or become a friend of yours for the, uh, the future good of themselves. You know, like that. So that can be very tricky. And then. And here, the Buddha, despite of being a, such a knowledgeable one and a, such a great uh, wisdom uh, holder, when Sariputta, uh, and who was also equal in knowledge to the Buddha, praises the Buddha, he rather than elate, uh, elate it or lift it, he simply you know, reminded Ananda of these. And after... Uh, after uh, the Buddha said, uh, and reminding that how could you make such a, an, a proclamation as an alliance role? Then Sariputta replies back, saying that, and here we can see that the Sariputta's faith on his knowledge about the Buddha's knowledge will not change. And so Buddha, the further Sariputta said, I do not have venerable sir any knowledge encompassing the minds of arhats and perfect enlightened ones of the past, the future and the present. But still I have understood this by inter, uh, inference from the Dhamma. Yeah? So it is he is simply expressing this again and confirming his faith by thinking that what he has already known. And he gives uh, he, he gives uh, a good simile here. Says, suppose, venerable sir, a king had a frontier frontier city with a strong rampart, walls and arches, and with a single gate. The gatekeeper posted there would be wise, competent, and intelligent, one who keeps out stranger and admits acquaintance, while he is walking alone. Along the path, the in circles, the city, he would not see a crypt or an opening in the walls even big enough for a cat to split, slip through. Yeah. He might think whatever large creatures enter or leaves the city, all enter and leaves through the gate. So too, venerable sir. I have understood this by inference from the Dhamma. Whatever Arhats perfected enlightened ones arose in the past, all those uh, blessed ones had first abandoned the five hindrances, corruption of the mind and weaken, uh, weaken, weakeners of wisdom. So, the uh, Sariputta confirms that why uh, the uh, knowledge, knowledgeable, uh, the, why the arhats and the buddhas are you know, uh, uh, greater, knowledgeable than anyone else. Uh, there is no in, uh, comparable with the Buddha, and that's simply because first in a first that these people will do or have done is the abandoning the five hindrances, and here five hindrances is um, uh, basically that hinders our progress. And the, those hindrances are called Kama Chanda, Payabhata, uh, so on, which is uh, the sensual pleasure. And as we being a, um, a beings which normally engage in the sensual pleasures and are very difficult to come away from the sensual pleasure. Meanwhile, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and doubt. So these are the five uh, hindrances. First, that the the old nobles ha, noble beings have abandoned, and these are actually the, the corrupt our mind. So in order to you know, uh, uh, understand this, that why these nobles are so knowledgeable, and here we can check that anyone who has got the less these hindrances, they are more so knowledgeable and wise rather than someone who has mostly engage in essential pleasure, ill will, slot and top and then something like a doubt doubt. And this you can check yourself as well. Since you being in a household life and in household life the more you are engaged 
in the household, what happens is that your arena of thinking is only about your family matters. You will disregard of anything about the community, anything about the country. All what you will be thinking is your own family good, family uh, earnings. Uh, and for that, you will do anything. Uh, may, may not be a good uh, alone way. Yeah? So that's why the first thing we have to overcome is the abandoning the five hindrances. And then later on, uh, the second is to establish or uh, developing the four establishment of a mindfulness, and that is the contemplating in the body, feeling, mind, and phenomena. As one is developing in these, will further on will develop the uh, seven bojangas, the seven factors of enlightenment, which is which starts from the being a mindfulness in our day to day life. And on that. Bojangas, I will uh, uh, speak tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow again is the Tuesday, so tomorrow we'll, we will not have any uh, uh, Dhamma talk in the evening at 6.30, but we will have uh, the discussion after the meditation uh, at uh, 8 o'clock. Sorry, uh, yeah, 8, 8 to 9 o'clock. Right? So you are most welcome to join on our Zoom for the discussion sessions. I am here tonight, so thank you everyone for listening and may you all be well and happy. With In a few moments time we are going to have evening chanting and guided meditation. You are most welcome to join with us. Until then, good night and see you shortly. Satur.